Welcome to Carnegie Gallery's Building Blocks of Still Life. Today, we have a project for you that involves still life, which is characterized by an image of an object or a group of objects that are not moving in an environment. The first example is from a Canadian oil painter named Mary Pratt. And notice her play with light to create contrasting shadows in this piece, and how there is a jar falling off the right side of the composition for a close up point of view. Here's another exciting example by master painter Pablo Picasso. Notice how he uses diagonal shapes in the background to draw the eye in from one corner of the composition. to another. As we observe the lithograph from right to left. Here's a final example from a Canadian still life master, Joseph Plaskett. Notice how he positions the forms within some distance from each other. Creating dialogue and tension. The first thing to consider is your location and surroundings. In my case, you see here a yellow background, which is the wall color for my living room, and a light checkered beige tablecloth on the surface. These two factors, the wall and the flat surface, in which the item is going to lay on is something to consider for your still life. The second thing now is our items. What items are you interested in composing as a still life? In my case, I have this beautiful ceramic piece done by Dale Mark, an artist member at the Carnegie Gallery. In my case, I've decided to go with forms of bowls or cups. So for your own still life, think about what types of three-dimensional forms you're interested in displaying for your composition. The third thing to consider is the composition itself. So what I mean by composition is how the items are placed within the frame. In this example, the composition is in the middle because the object lies in the middle of the focal point. When an object is in the middle, it might seem predictable, but the object can also feel isolated, vulnerable, quiet, because of the insulation of space around it, and time seems to stand still. Another composition to consider is offsetting it, which means that we are going to move the object slightly to the left or the right. This is when something called negative space comes into play. In this case, there's negative space in the left, which creates a sort of tension, empty space that creates a foil for the other space. And it could also be used to lead the eye in. So for in this case, from right to left. The third composition for a single object is when the object is falling right off the edges of the frame. So let's bring the piece over here, like so. By offsetting the composition, we start to think about its perspective. 
So why is it off to one side? Where is the rest of the object? There's also notions of secrecy, or something unknown is about to happen, from this point of view. We are now ready to bring in a few other pieces from our artist members collection to really consider the relationships between more than one object. The next piece is by Deborah Doran. Which is right over here. And we're going to place the work right next to each other in the center. What this does is we get a very strong sense of duality. So for example, men and woman, day and night, and really start to consider the differences between the forms, such as height, and width, but also similarities too in color, in texture, and in basic forms such as a cup or a bowl. The next we thing we can do to play around with it a bit further is to offset one of the items. And so I'm actually going to put the two separate and apart like this. We immediately get a different sense from the beginning. Why is there a tension between the two objects? And we really start to see a dialogue happening between the two, as if they are two human beings in conversation. And finally, we will bring a third piece by Louise McCann and we're going to place the piece actually quite close to the forefront sorry the foreground and what this does is we are starting to form a triangle based composition so what that means is from this front piece to the background piece and then to the middle ground piece over here, we get a sense of a three-way relationship happening. And once you've done so with your own objects, let's really start playing around. What would happen if we put this one these two together, and this one a bit closer, a bit further back. So once you're happy with your composition, we're finally going to move on to the fourth factor, which is lighting. Right now, I am using the natural light source. And today is a very cloudy day with some sunlight streaking in. And so you notice that the shadows are very, very, very dim and long. To play around with lighting even further, we can bring in some man-made light sources. you notice right away that there is a strong sense of shadows and highlights, which could play a really interesting part to your still life. And lastly, let's see what happens when I bring in the additional light source further and further away from the objects. The further the light source goes away from the objects, the dimmer and lighter the shadows get. But also note that the contrast between the objects and the shadows and the colors are also affected. 
Here are two traditional examples of the impact light sources can have on still lifes. Notice the strong contrast in shadows and highlights of Caravaggio's on the left to the soft light shadows of Cezanne's work on the right. To wrap up, let's have a look at some examples from our own artist members here at Carnegie Gallery to think about the possibilities of what we have just learned. What if we introduced more complicated forms within our still life, such as plants or a watering can like we see here in this painting? Secondly, what if we introduced symbols? We see here in Patricia's painting, a snake and a daisy, which may suggest juxtaposing symbols of innocence and evil. Lastly, we could push this even further by suggesting a narrative within symbols and themes. This piece could be interpreted as a fleeting moment when one observes the tension between the broken vase and a single peacock feather. With the help of traditional and contemporary artists, we have learned that still lives can be composed with a few simple steps from the comfort of our own homes. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.